think I figured it out. Much smoother, much smoother. Right. Too bad. I don't know. Depending on how far we get on this, uh, hopefully I might be able to give you a little bonus with some of um, the 24 man raids. Maybe. I'm not sure. We'll find out. What have we here? Tis not unlike a Hamish alchemical furnace in design. Well, there is one way we might find out. Stop! You mustn't touch it. Fritra! Oh, my apologies. Should I continue calling you Varshan? You may address me as you wish. My nature is no longer a secret. Still, this is not a setting I imagined for our reunion. Surely you've not entered these ruins as common looters. Um, well... But we could deny your accusations, but I fear you're not far from the truth. Great Vritra, might we beseech thee to explain the nature of this strange contrivance? It was crafted by our alchemists at my behest, for the purpose of sealing something away. All right. Um, I wasn't going to touch it, but you know, you stole or in a way, what exactly? Okay. Um, Emma goes is is kind of hearted and not gonna. Exactly. Perhaps I should simply show you. I have lifted the seal, if only for the moment, by an authority only I possess. A plainer fisher? No, my friend. Small though it may be, this is a functioning gate into the void. And such a tiny portal truly be so dangerous. I came here in search of something that might 
Kind of my research. Did not anticipate a fully functioning void gate. Even in the learned halls of Shalian, tis forbidden to throw wide the gates to the abyss. The peril is far too great. I expect you have more questions. Void gates and fissures are much the same in practice, in the sense that both allow passage between the thir source and the thirteenth. The difference in terminology refers to the circumstance of their creation. Fissure is an incidental tear in the fabric between worlds, whereas a void gate is the product of deliberate action. I suspect this is the latter, judging by the elaborate mechanism put in place to control it. To think that our search for material riches would lead to this priceless discovery. That swirling emptiness it puts me in mind of old friends, not to mention old foes. You may now enter Azadal's legacy with a party of NPC avatars. To make use of this feature, open the trust interface located under the booty in the main menu. You sure that this is a prison the void gate with a scholarly die. We had uh, Heaven's Word music. I must admit, I am deathly curious to know how a void gate came to be hidden in the depths of these ruins. To tell that tale, we must first peer far to the south, and even further into memory. An age five millennia past, when the Algan Empire sent an invading force to the shores of Merasidia. The southern people rallied around the commanding figures of Bahamut and Tiamat and fought fiercely to repel the would-be conquerors. With Bahamas defeat, however, the tide turned against them. Desperate to seize any advantage, the Mercidians resorted to summoning primal entities. In response, Emperor Zande forged a covenant with the Cloud of Darkness, sovereign among the all-devouring denizens of the Void. Thus bolstered by icons on one side and Void Scent on the other, the two armies clashed in a battle of unspeakable carnage. So much death, so much loss. I consider myself well-versed in that period of history, yet you speak as one who witnessed it happen. Indeed, I did. I heard Tiamat's roar of defiance and sped toward that war-torn land. Along with my sibling, Ajdaya. We dragons are not male or female, as men are wont to classify, but Elder Sister is the closest a mortal tongue can come to describing what she meant to me. I was the last of our brood to hatch, and Ashdaya cared for me where my sire could not. Thus, I was with her when Tiamat roared. I was with her when she journeyed south, and I was with her when she fought against the void sent hordes. Yet no matter how many of their vile fiends we cast down, more rose from the abyss to take their place. Faced with an unwinnable war of attrition, Ashdaya risked her all on a final gamble. She plunged through the void gate itself to strike at the root of their strength. I tried to follow in her wake, determined to lend what aid I could. But even as I came upon Alag's glittering tower, I saw the rift close behind her. 
and Ajdaya has been lost to us ever since. I find I must retract my earlier claim of historical knowledge. Nowhere in the Crystal Tower's archives did I see mention of such noble sacrifice. That does not surprise me. To Alagan eyes, it must have seemed as if a lone dragon, driven to madness, simply dove through the gate and did not return. For my part, I spent long years searching for the means to reunite with Ajdaya. Until I could search no more, until Alag was dust, and the arts to open a void gate large enough to accommodate a dragon forever lost. Yet you have the beginnings of a gate right here, under the control of a harnessed device. My discovery came before Radzat Han was founded. Though I scoured the lands for a method to cross the rift, it was beneath the sea that I chanced to find a natural plane of fissure. It was, however, far too narrow to admit a worm's bulk. Only after our city rose upon the rock, and I could enlist the aid of our talented alchemists, did matters take a favorable turn. Their dedication was beyond reproach. Tirelessly, they worked to expand the fissure. And after decades of toil, it finally grew to a size that a child might pass through. Not long ago, you told us that you called out to your kin, but Ashdaya's answer was silence. I suspect the conclusion to your tale is not a joyful one. With hope in my heart, I used a sinew lake rum to cross the threshold. But no, I did not find her. What I found was a host of void scent clamoring around the opening they had sensed. It was but a moment, but enough. I had no choice but to retreat and allow the portal to contract once more. The gate was a threat to your people. You had to decide between endangering Razat Han and abandoning your sister. You chose the latter. It was not that thy siblings scorned thy call. It was that she was trapped beyond a barrier through which neither roar nor dragon may pass. Even now, in the desolate world of the Thirteenth, I can scarce imagine your pain, yet it was wise not to linger in that place. Too long a sojourn, and even a being of your power risks being warped into a creature of the void. You've seen this phenomenon before, when we stepped into the darkness. I don't see why I would choose this. I remember when Nero turned purple. Turned purple? Well, yes. His wounds had allowed the Void's corruption to enter his body and twist his ether. Had it been allowed to progress much longer, I presume he would have been fully transformed. Then there is little hope for Ashdaya. Ah, no. I hadn't meant to. I speak only of possibilities. The scales of the first brood are extraordinarily resistant to ethereal fluctuations. They are the protective talisman's core components, after all, and even the corruption I described would struggle to overcome. With the warding scale in one's possession, one could conceivably survive a stay in the 13th without being warped by its energies.
Be that as it may, it is too late to rescue my sister. Five thousand years too late. And now countless others look to me for guidance and protection. So when I sensed intruders in the ruins, I came only to ensure that the gate remained closed. That, and to secure the treasure, of course. I wish only to forget the rest. So they managed not only to expand the fissure, but also manipulate it as one by the gate. Astonishing. If there's any chance I can learn more of this feat, this is accomplished. I will tell you what I can. First, however, I must return to the High Crucible and arrange to replace the Guardians you so handily destroyed. It will not, not do to leave a undefended. Oh, my apologies. We will perhaps a touch service in our rush to uncover this vault secrets. If the constructs can be repaired, we'd be happy to offer our assistance. That will not be necessary. Much as I retain spare vessels for myself, we keep duplicate guardians on hand for such adventuralities. In any case, you should return to Ratatan. Speak with Larshan at the High Crucible of Valkania. See, I paid attention to how these are pronounced. Business of the High Crucible, I ask not to deter you from entering, so we welcome all those interested in the Alta Valkyrie. It's simply to warn you not to get underfoot. Quite the gathering, to what we owe the pleasure. Breedra speaks as if Eshdaya is the lost cause, but her wager reveals differently in his heart of hearts. There's much about the Void Gate I cannot even begin to explain. I must convince Vitro to share everything he knows. It was a most enjoyable exhibi expedition for which I am grateful. As for my evaluation, I shall impress upon the Lopperts that a treasure vault is incomplete without daunting sentinels who test the metal of any who who would of any would be intruders. I am loath to keep Cryo waiting much longer. I cannot bring myself to leave before hearing more of Vitra's tale. I promise we will discuss the Void Gate further, but, I must fir but first I must attend to the matter of the Vault Sentinels. As your instruments have no doubt to form you, the Kapikuru has been used to so much to so much scrap. Please bring a new one out of storage and see that it's conveyed to its post along with some lesser, few lesser constructs. Was it too Mars? Hence, fiends born of the Tower of Zot by, by the sisters. Do not tell me a blasphemy yet, Rome's of free. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. 
Why such guilty faces? Surely it isn't you who is responsible for this. Oh. <laughs> well, the details aren't important. I shall see it done immediately. <laughs> and with that, the vault will soon be secure once more. Now, I believe you have questions. Quite a few, in fact, and I'd like to begin with the gate itself. It is still functional, yes? Indeed, which is why I saw it sealed with an alchemically forged lock boarded with my magics. Such power must not fall into the wrong hands. In truth, the primary reason for the vault's construction was to keep the gate hidden from the outside world. Some shepherd for such a little door. That little door you speak of leads to an abyss teeming with unspeakable horrors. That said, in its current state it would admit only the lowliest, lowest of void scent, and from this side no man would be able to pass through. No man? I should think Alfner would fit. Give it a firm enough push. Physical side is only one consideration. The true restriction hinges upon the etheric density of the soul in transit. And yet, you succeed in d expanding this diminutive portal and sending your simulacrum to the 13th. Thanks to my brilliant alchemists, I should have destroyed the, an the anomaly when I found it, but instead I bade them devise means to withdraw it. After much experimentation, they accomplished the impossible. The method it was conceived by which my magics would manipulate the fissure and transform it into a serviceable void gate. But the process has long since been forgotten. Once I've given up, had given up searching for Ostaya, there is no need to preserve such esoteric and dangerous knowledge. Thus was the gate lain dormant for years uncounted. Our own passage to the 13th was made at um, Relatively simple, thanks to the Crystal Tower. An ancient mechanism channeling the tower's vast stores of energy to open a void gate, unbound to a covenant made with the Cloud of Darkness. Once that sovereign entity was beaten back, however, the covenant was broken and the doorway se severed from its connection to the void. Theoretically, it would be possible to reconnect the gate by forging a new pact with another void set, but such deals usually end betrayal and death. In any case, we should attempt to gain an understanding of the Bounty's Gate. Mayhap we will resume the search for your sister. As I have already explain explained, I put those futile hopes to rest centuries ago. My place, my duty, is here now. Ah, I had meant to ask, what prompted you to search for the vault in the first place? Uh, blame it on Stinian or to see if the legends were true. I mean, the legends are true. As you have seen, this fabulous wealth from the stories is quite real. It is not its, if not, not its room and origins. But I'm afraid I must assert a prior claim. I've been adding to that role for years, little by little. But the time has come to spend it, and I might, that I might alleviate my people's suffering. Then we are of one mind. We had no intention of taking it for ourselves. Isn't that right, my friend? Nod. Your Excellency, would you object if I were to conduct a closer examination of the gate? I will make no attempt to open it, of course. I owe you and yours a debt that can never be repaid. Whatever boon you ask for me, you should have it. You are most gracious. I shall take full advantage of your permission. Would that I could join thee in thy study, but Lopert, the Lopperts will be anxious to receive my report. I beg my leave of you. And I must be off to Charlene as well. Mr. Schuyl is eager to speak to you about that request, so please come back to the Annex as soon as you are able. Farewell for now. We can discuss my findings once I return. 
It will not be rid of me so easily. May I now undertake the Chronicles of New Era quest, Miss of the Realm. Speak with the fresh faced student about the Essian Annex to accept the this quest. I hope you enjoyed the expedition at least. Once it was other, otherwise it was a heavy purse to pay for a treasure map leading to a treasure we couldn't keep. The difficult part in all this will be deciding how best to put these riches to use. You lend me your assistance in your deliberations. Well, of course. Thank you, amigos. Amigos and I are in this together. I will follow his example. Meanwhile, elsewhere. Can't help but do the uh, the old news radio voice or news reel voice. I sense the breaching of a gate, but it is not extinguished, instigated from this side, thus thrown open from the other. I too felt it, a rare occurrence, yes, but such a tiny portal is beneath our notice. There's much more pressing matters at hand. An opportunity is upon us, the coming of which we have awaited for nigh on 10,000 years. We dare not let it slip our grasp. Yet we must not underestimate he who bested the cloud of darkness. Even restrained by a covenant, the cloud was no feeble wisp to, to be dispersed by some flesh and blood mortal. Ah, let him come. I will drown the world and watch his fleshling grasp and his breath in its final moments. Your zeal is admirable, but forget not our cause. Think back to our struggles beneath the sunless sky. Remember why we see not our will to fight. Tis time we set the war in motion and win redemption to our, for our star. Apparently Final Fantasy 4 reference? I'm not a Final Fantasy person, so I don't know much about it. All right. I hope you enjoyed the expedition, at least, otherwise, uh, that's the same thing. Shall we begin? If we are to spend the treasure wisely, we must first determine which groups benefit most from monetary assistance. Some of my citizens may find it intimidating to speak with the satrap directly, so I would ask that you act in my stead. Emagos, you are to visit Akiali and Yedelsman. Speak with Matsya and his people and listen to their grievances. Justinian, 
I bid you to do, go to do the same at Parka's stand. I will be conducting my own inquiries at your shrine's gold ground. Once you believe you have ascertained the needs of the populace, we will reconvene at Megaduta. Oh, Hemagos, I'm so glad to see you have returned unharmed. You finished with the boat then? Mm hmm. Anything the village desperately needs? Well, I suppose Kazal's loss hit us the hardest. Been trying to find buyers for my fish, but and although I sell a few here and there, it's so much more difficult than it was before. Everyone's still struggling to rebuild their lives, but now we're just bending together as best we can. I don't know why it didn't first have me do Yiddle's mod and then go to y Aki Ali, but... <laughs> Greetings, welcome, traveler. If this is your first visit to Tavernir, then you are must try my special Amra Lassi. His refreshing zest cannot be beat. What could such a wonder cost, you wonder? Normally I part with three, thousand, three bottles for a generous price of 19,800 gil. But for you, I am willing to go as low as 10,000. Be practically stealing from me. Still, yeah, the best price you're the only thief around here. Uh, still not turn your profits. Uh, I am not a stealing. Uh, still not turning a profit these days. Times are harsh, my friend. The world may no longer be on fire, but we are still sifting through the ashes, so to speak. This is fair me. We might as well um, have that ugly tower back on the scant few travelers we see these days. I myself barely have the coin to buy any local price at local prices. I tell you, if I didn't charge your odd adventurer a small fortune. For afternoon tea, I'll be scavenging for scraps in the streets. <sighs> Father Jew. Our fair support, while well, it's in shambles, isn't it? The trade routes are open once more now, that the danger has passed, certainly. But no small number of merchants have had to sell their ships have had to sell their ships to make ends meet in the short term. Add to the sailors we lost in the final days, and it's a little wonder the flow of exports is no more than a, a pitiful trickle. If Kazal and his consortium is still with us, I'm sure he'd have found a way to turn our fortunes around. Now that was the man who got things done. That's rest his soul. You have spoken with key local figures and gained an understanding of the popular hardships. Barshran awaits your report at Megaduta. Back to Raza. Megaduta. Ah, my advisor's return. I've just made it back myself. Why do you retain this vessel now that your true phone is known? You could have flown across the island in a fraction of the time. Be that as it may, the sight of a mass of creatures descending from the sky can be startling to say the least. 
but there are few places I can, and there are few places I can enter comfortably without risk of flattening some cart or stall. Huh. Fair enough. As for more, my inquiries, the people of Palakistan were unanimous in their reply. They are surviving. Resources are stretched to the limit when re refugees were pouring in, but they per persevered with some assistance from Yedermod. Yedermod. From what I understand, they have always had in, been an independent community, hunters and foragers and alike, and I'm assured that the jungles provides for their needs, for the most part. Palakistan has weathered the disaster better than most, it seems. I myself heard good news and bad. The quarrymen are cautiously optimistic, having just sold the full wagon of giant skull to a foreign trader. But such visitors are few and far between. Compared to our best years, the weight of stone leaving Thavnir has been light indeed. Our nation is small and isolated, its prosperity dependent on a steady stream of exports. We must identify any obstacles to the flow of trade so we can may begin working to remove them. Tell me, what did you learn in Akiali and Yelnad? This, that, and the other. Hmm, we see. Without a dedicated buyer, the average fisherman must struggle to offload its daily catch. Which is why I believe we should first address the lack of ships and shortage of able-bodied sailors in Yedemad. I am reminded of a child I spied as I made my way back to the palace. His father lost at sea when the beasts sunk their vessel. The many variations of the same tragic fate repeated over and over. The many lost their lives. Enough grief to drown in if you let your ourselves be overcome. But we will not. Emigos says stealing. I will consider the perspective you brought me and devise a plan to help my people confront this adversity. Come, I would like you to be in attendance when I announce the proposal to the assembled functionaries. The treasure shall be sold for more convenient currency. Thence, invested into the trading port of Yedramad. Our merchants must have their operations restored, their ships rebuilt. Commerce must flow once more. None were spared the tragedy of the final days. Of this, I am well. But an absence was created by the loss of Karazal's consortium. And by filling it, we provide new means for our fishermen, our artisans, and others to bring their wares to distant markets. And 
what of the children who were left without family to care for them? That is a concern which weighs heavily upon my mind. A simple gift of coin will soon be exhausted, leaving these young souls adrift on the fringes of our society. Nay, a proper solution is needed, one which doth guarantee their welfare for years to come. Thou hast surely seen how other nations rise to meet this challenge, adventurer. What dost thou deem the wisest course? Uh, the most famous orphanage was funded through to trade in the highly coveted. It takes village taxes, levy. Levy them and trade profits in exchange for your investment. I say, I, you know, uh, of, uh, every time I've gone through this, I have not picked this one. I'm sure we're going to get the same result in any case, so. Give an example. I'm going to honor one of your most successful merchants. A successful merchant? Ah, I believe I see thy reasoning. Kalzal should be remembered, not as the blasphemy which terrorized Thavne, but as a hard working generous man who brought much wealth to our shores do any among you object to this proposition many here lost loved ones to the beasts in that time of strife any one of us could have broken any one of us may have been taken by despair when I think of Kalzal, I feel no hatred. Only a stinging regret that we could not save him as well. Isn't that right, men? This bodes well for that boy. The rod was it. Perhaps he can cut ties with that shady peddler. Then let it be done. Henceforth, this initiative shall be known as the Kalzal Foundation. Nabdeen, thou art to assemble a patrol and ensure that no child in this city liveth in squalor.
Dragon and man, side by side in pursuit of a brighter morrow. I'm reminded of Ishgard. Or buff food. Veteran Radiant wishes to share his gratitude. Before I do that, I need to refund my beverage. I'll be right back. Eventually, I'm going to reconfigure everything so I got the color right. Oh, no, that's not it. Ah, there we go. back. Thank you for putting forth Kazal's name. And those whose lives he enriched will take comfort in seeing. Oh, dear. Forgive me for not speaking sooner, but I bear a message from Archon Mishola. She asks that you meet her at the High Crucible at your earliest convenience. Understood. Thank you. Ushola must have f finished her study of the wood gate. Shall we hear what she has to say then? I will go with you. I thought the Sartrap will be too busy setting up the foundation. My clerks will have been the well-oiled cogs of this administration since before... Aha one, uh, assume the office. They understand what needs to be done. And I'm curious to learn what conclusions your are kind of reach concerning the gate's unique construction. As you wish. Allow me to lead the way, your excellency. We go down, take an eighth right, and then walk on to the...
But one who claims it is too late to save his sister, Vitra seems awfully interested in whatever revelations Yashtola might have to share. Now we bear what, hear what your scholarly comrade has to say. Right, here we all are. You discovered something new. I took a closer look at that device. I was able to determine how it keeps the void gate sealed, but not how it might instead be employed to expand the opening. For that, I would need to reference the technique developed by Vritra's alchemists, no records of which appear to have survived the intervening years. We know this, so why have you sent for us? Have you learned aught of value or not? Patience, good sir. One must introduce the subject before launching into specifics. From what we understand, travel between worlds is accomplished by passing through the nebulous rift which exists between them. Picture, if you will, the moment you were called to the first. You touched a focus of some kind to help the Exarch pinpoint your location. His summoning spell then channeled the energies of the Crystal Tower to begin your journey to his world. The magics tore a hole in the wall separating Source and Shard and cast you into the intervening nothingness. In that place, the laws of nature hold no sway. Yet even through this realm of temporal and spatial instability, you were born safely to your destination in the first. The feet that guided you across such an unimaginable distance, both physical and metaphorical, was nothing short of a miracle. Then what of the many voids sent found in the source? Who guides them here and how? An excellent question. Though there are several methods by which the Void's denizens might intrude upon our world, the rituals of summoning are the most typical. For example, let us consider the Gargoyle, a creature of middling power. such an entity, the prospective summoner must force open a void gate. The portal lasts but a moment and is relatively small, allowing only an imp or other lesser being to squeeze through with their physical body intact. more powerful gargoyle, however, is too large for that. Creating a gate big enough for him would require vast amounts of energy, far beyond the reserves of any one mortal practitioner. Instead, tis far more common to bring over only the entity's soul we had a taste of that ourselves when a certain exarch dragged us to the first. A 
And just as our bodies remained in our world, the Void Sense physical form is left behind in the 13th. Once at its destination, the summoned soul is granted a temporary shell to inhabit. In the gargoyle's case, a stone effigy has proven a suitable vessel. You said that Voidsent must be called here deliberately by someone in the source, reeled in like a fisherman with his catch. Exactly. For a being to navigate the chaos of the rift, with or without form, there must needs be a guiding agent on the other side. When the hordes poured forth from Alag's Great Gate, it was the technologists who drew them through. Though, to my knowledge, planar fissures are, in essence, natural passages between our world and the Void, which require no such guidance to traverse. Why is only the boundary between the Source and the Thirteenth so fragile? So much so that it often tears open of its own accord. I believe solving that mystery is key to understanding travel between the Source and its reflections. How do you intend to get your answers? No. The danger is too great. Perhaps. But what some call danger, others think of as adventure. Were you not listening to my tale? Never mind that the means to expand the gate has been lost to the ages. Even could you force the portal wide enough, you would be greeted by an army of murderous horrors the very instant you step through. I assure you I was most attentive, and I agree that to go alone would be certain death. But if I were to bring along one who has already braved the 13th, and humbled the cloud of darkness. Well, I imagine my chances would be much improved. Yeah, <laughs> count me in. I had a feeling you might say that. Once again, I put my life in your ever-reliable hands. That said, as much as I would like to march straight back to the Void Gate, there is the small matter of being unable to open it without the Sartrap's personal authority. As I've said before, I will grant you and yours any boon you choose to name, provided it does not endanger my people. You have my word that we will take every precaution. Not a single void scent will be allowed to threaten Radzat Han, assuming we manage to expand the portal in the first place. You have a plan. Actually, I had hoped you might help us with that. I presume the alchemists you retained supplied you with some explanation of their methodology. That they did. House Daimir was overseeing the project. Daimir, Daimir. Ah, yes. The family associated with the great work. I did not fully comprehend the theory, 
But their research began with a void scent which had slipped through the fissure. After a thorough examination, they created an arcane simulacrum possessed of similar qualities. A man-made void scent, if you will. It was apparently indispensable in their efforts to enlarge the gate. A man-made void scent? Yes. Being great admirers of the Archons, House Daymir submitted detailed notes to Charlene's official committee. They expected praise and accolades for their simulacrum, and were thus devastated to be informed that their work had been classified as prohibited material. If that's true, then those notes might still be stored in a forbidden archive somewhere. Not Google, of course, since that library had yet to be built. Which leaves us with... The restricted section of Numenon. Do, do I want to be straightforward? Do I want to tease Graha? Or do I want to play dumb? Um, I think I like teasing Graha. Indeed, Numenon's restricted stacks may very well hold a copy. In which case, I say we head directly to Charlian. Unless you anticipate needing help to reach the high shelf, I see myself being of little use. Go on ahead. I still need to find Mirad and tell him about the Kalzal Foundation. Let us be on our way as well. to venture into the void. Do I sit idly by? It was, uh... Conflicted! music more in the background. If we are to enter Nimrod's restricted archives with a minimum of fuss, then we must secure the permission of the forum. First, however, we shall need to enlist the cooperation of a member to broach the matter on behalf. Who do you think might be inclined to assist us? No one springs to mind? Hmm. That is Skolok Montashem. He did come to Graha's defense during the inquiry, after all. It's settled. Let us head to Numenon and see if he's willing to help us once more. Yushvola is now accompanying you. Blah, 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 blah. One thing they did add was we can now use, <laughs> use the Ethernet. Without losing our... I apprenticed to Master Matoya at the age of seven and labored under her tutelage for a full decade. I never had the chance to attend the studio. Neither did Thancred, as I recall. As soon as Master Louis Soua took him in the street, he was put in the care of another Archon. He was a who was a rigorous and practical education out of espionage and survival. I sometimes wonder what my life would have been like if I pursued studies here instead. T 
tea at the last stand after a day of lectures? Or should 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 I wonder as well? Should should I wonder as well? Oh never mind. It was just an idle thought. visitors. It is quite esteemed ones at that. What may I do for you? Pray forgive the intrusion, Skolak. We are hoping that you might help us secure permission to enter Numenon's restricted archives. Ho oh, ho! No furtive foray into the sacks this time. I applaud this newfound sense of propriety. Yet, in all this wide world of comparative Serenity, what so compels you to disturb a vault of forbidden wisdom? Fascinating. I had no idea such a technique existed. I would have been surprised if you had. If my assumption is correct. The research left behind by House Damier was lain dormant in Charlene's archives for many centuries. And if you unearth this research, what then? Surely you do not tend to cross over into the void. That is, in fact, precisely what we intend. What end, pray tell? To develop a method of transversing the rift, for one, that I might keep my word to a distant friend. Sentiment aside, I have journeyed to the end of existence. I have heard, felt, and thought endlessly about the truth of our world, the echo of its future. And yet I want to understand everything, to unravel it all down to its very last secret. What scholar worthy of the na name wouldn't be fo forced to open a void gate or two if a grand revelation was the promised reward? Ha ha ha! Marvelous! An audacious... Audacious proposal worthy of Master Batoya herself. After hearing the wise and the wherefores, I for one do not believe you would use the art knowledge for ill. I see no reason not to present your request to the form's consideration. Although your petition would be better received if you had the support of another well-paced acquaintance. Alright. My Master Fortuna, for, of course. He has hardly ignored his request from his dear children's most treasured comrades. I was hesitant to approach him directly, but there is no denying that having Master Fortuna on our side would tip the balance in our favor. Very well, we will pay a visit to the Levier estate and template our case. Ah, one last thing before you go. I would consider it a personal favor if you would. You might share with me the discoveries you make in the void. My appetite for knowledge is every bit, uh, every bit as insatiable as yours, Wager. And if you would see your way indulging old man's curiosity, of course, Skolak, we would be sure to pass on any revelations. The outfits people wear. It is quite... It happens quite a bit that uh, Ro Morganin is wearing some funny hat like a fat chocobo hat or in that case a bunny. Bunny head. It is quite frequent in... Uh, in Final Fantasy fourteen.
I'm more practical. I'd like to look cool, not look funny. Ah, Master Amigos, Mr. Sistrola, how may I be of service? You've come to speak to Master Fortuno. Is he home by chance? Yes, the Master is in residence, so she'll inform him that he has guests. Well, well, minions would invite you inside for tea, but I assume this is not a social visit. We have some matter of import to discuss. Then pray proceed. You have my full attention. Exposition. Well, I suppose I should... To praise you for your following the proper protocols this time around. Let's go look, Montrachain expressed much the same sentiment, I assure you. We're not to attempt to circumvent the storms of fort, fort authority again, unless it's absolutely necessary, of course. Whoops. You do understand that the restricted archives are restricted for good reasons, yes? If no pressing need exists, then why risk the consequences of employing this forbidden knowledge? For a brother who misses his sister. He was his guardian and his friend. A helpless hero who crossed the rift between worlds to save her homeland from horror and suffering. And the brother has given up on thoughts of reunion. But the brother has given up thoughts on reunion. He spends his efforts elsewhere, watching over a people yet healing from the flames of the final days, loyal to his duty while betraying the longing in his heart. It is no vital mission, perhaps, uniting these siblings, but it feels a worthy cause to pursue all the same. As one who feared losing his own loved ones and spent years in research to prevent it, surely you appreciate how painful such a separation must be. Reflections are still very much a mystery to us, offering to share your experiences to, in the first should constitute a fair exchange for your cooperation. Do not celebrate just yet. The forum must still be convinced. I will add your request to the list of today's deliberations and deliver the decision to you at the Baldassian Annex. Hey, if you want more information about the first, I can go there. I could, it's, it's just, just right here, Norvrind. I got all these places I could go in Norvrind. Just, just say, hey, uh, get, uh, uh, bring us something from Norvrind. <laughs> I'll go. Want to know about the first? I'll help you out with that. So we got, uh, just to show, the Crystal Beyond from Beyond is for the Raid series, which I still haven't recorded. Uh, and a mission to in Mordor Mordona is the uh, Lion's Raid. That's for after all the 6.1 content. And over here, speak to you, Stola. What did the forum decide? Put it bluntly, Master Matoya has burned some bridges here in Charlie and insulted the earth for good measure. When it became clear that a student was the petitioner in the question, well, no few members voiced their discontent. Then the chamber was reminded, in no uncertain terms, I might add, of the incredible debt we owe to you and your companions. Oh, 
That serves the silence of grumbles and stifle a few, stiffen a few spines. And I would agree that allowing you to new entry to the Ark is the least we can do to in return. That is wonderful news. Thank you both for speaking on our behalf. Yes, well, as I am sure you're aware, this permission is not extended lightly. Forbidden knowledge is to be treated with the utmost caution, and there will be repercussions if it is not. I wish you well in your endeavor and bid you good day. Yeah. Typical fortune now. Ever the same, that one. Uncompromising. Yes. And that's. But that very service has been exactly what Charlene needed to guide it through. Not one, but two exoduses. Oh, about five years younger to cast. Five years younger to cast aside my lectern and join you on your adventures in a heartbeat. I went rather well, I think. As a child, I dreamed up any number of schemes of getting my hands on those forbidden tomes. <laughs> Now I can simply walk in through the door. Our focus will be on finding House Damia's research notes, of course, but the thought of so much knowledge at my disposal has me feeling a little giddy. I'd like to set out as soon as you're ready. We'll be heading directly to the archives from here, I presume. Presume correctly. Then you will want to speak with the index page when you... Arrive. Been instructed to grant you access to the restriction section. Excellent. Once again, we thank you for your, all your help. Oh, it was my pleasure, believe me. May you find the knowledge you seek. Shall we? Girl is accompanying me again. Fastest way to Numenon is to go to the studium first. And speed our way. I think the set of instructions I laughably imagined may actually exist, but yawns away from where where you found me napping. If I had known of Alsa Dalsa Third's exploit sooner, I would well have saved myself days of research. Even a children's book might have when you be in the right direction. To achieve the impossible, one must needs be flexible of mind and look beyond conventional wisdom. A lesson I've already already learned, but clearly not taken to heart. Upon your shoulder and guest identified, do you wish to proceed into the research archives? Follow me, if you would, watch your step, and please note that the use of na naked flames is discouraged. This music is the same as the, the Great Google Library. Notes are to be found anywhere. It will be here. Let us begin. I've seen this like four times already. Three times? Three times. We have five characters. I wonder if there's nowhere near this. So three times. So I know exactly that this leather bone bound log is exactly what we're looking for. The following pages detail, uh, detail an advanced method of manipulating rift spanning apertures as 
devised by Nuhasham, the ninth patriarch of House Damia. We present these research notes to the faculty of Charlie and Studium as both the token of our friendship and expression for our boundless admiration. You appear I've located the forbidden volume you seek. You shall know me to make the final confirmation. The Epiphanies of House Demeter. Have something you'd like to show me, do you? I apologize. I left open by a single book and was completely absorbed by its contents. What book did you get? Well done, Amigos. I think we have found our prize. Yes, the ether signature is unmistakable. I've felt the traces of House Damia's resonance many times at the great work. Time to see what all the fuss was about. Among the ranks of the Void Sent, there exist entities with the power to call forth their brethren from beyond. The species known as Atomos, however, is uniquely prodigious in this regard. From its distended maw, it can expel an endless procession of Void-born creatures, a talent which sorely tested the Radiant Host in its battles against these abominations. Surmising that the entity itself was acting as a void gate, we endeavored to capture a small specimen and subsequently examine its physiological structure. Our findings revealed that the Atomos had absorbed a planar fissure into its own flesh, which it could expand at will into a functioning gate. Upon further analysis, we identified an ethereal wave pattern emitted during this process. A pattern we were able to emulate by passing crystal stored ether through a specially designed prism. We proceeded to embed said prism into an arcane simulacrum, thus completing what we have dubbed our artificial atomos. How could I have been so blind to the possibilities? This species, not to mention its ability to summon Void Scent, has been discussed among academics for years now. Just before the advent of the seventh Umbral Calamity, we received reports of Atomos sightings from every corner of Eorzea. Surely you've at least heard the tales. Ran into a few of them. still, House Damir went and built a mock Atomus of their very own. I'm not surprised the Archons consigned their work to a restricted archive. It was no easy task, but at last we've unearthed the volume we've been searching for. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tempted to stay longer. See what other forbidden titles might be lurking on these shelves? Ah, but that would be abusing the very special privilege we've been granted now, wouldn't it? Better not.
Congratulations on locating the object you are searching. Please move along. As much as I would love to start crafting the Atomos, I'm afraid this is far outside so my field of expertise. Fortunately, we know a Hanish alchemist who would be delighted to involve herself in our house Damia project. Our business here is concluded for the moment. Please pass on our regards to the forum. Your message will be be conveyed. Should you wish to indulge in more forbidden literature, I will be here. Patron mode disabled. Security mode engaged. If anyone can help us, Nidana can. I say we return to Thavnir and look for her at the great work. Back and forth between Th uh, uh, Thavnir and Charlene. All these sh shallow, sleep-deprived faces, but their eyes still burn with fiery zeal. Some things never change. Your stole up tells me you are pursuing the most fascinating study, and that you want me to be a part of it. I have no doubt you'd be interested. This research log should speak for itself. Will it now? By the sisters, this is the mark of House Damia. I've never even known such work existed. You should. It was sequestered in Numenon. Restricted archives, after all. It was? But that means every word within is forbidden knowledge. Forbidden tome filled with forbidden research. And you put it right into my unsuspecting hand? I can hardly wait to read it. <laughs> you think that Damia had developed such marvelous techniques so long ago? How many innovations have been lost over the centuries, I wonder? Now that we've glanced over the notes, what say you, say you to helping us build a new mock... Atomos. I say yes! A thousand times yes! Work on a Damia project has had been the redoubtable scholar and that even the redoubtable scholars of Charlie and trembled in saddles. No alchemists that the great works could resist. You're a woman after my own heart. Oh, I suppose I should ask. What do you mean to do with this big mouth silly icon once you've built it? Exposition. Oh, we're going to enter the void. So, there's a secret void gate. It's sealed in the ruins at the bottom of the bounty. The day is a revelation indeed. If the purpose of our man-made Atmos is to expand this hidden portal, then I will need to see it for myself, I think. Manipulating rift-spanning apertures is not the sort of things you want to attempt without first taking into account every single factor. And by all means, accompany us to the vault. I plan to lead... Lead us back there shortly, once you finish gathering the components I require. Huh? Charlene's markets provide, provided the raw aquamarine and the pure water crystals, but I might need help obtaining a small quantity of astrally fused water. For such a liquid, you need go no further than the Font of Maya. The aesthetics of old... Once favored the place for their meditations, and the waters which pools are now known to be enlivened, known to enliven the flow of air. Sounds perfect. If you'd be so kind as to fill the flask in the pool, I will petition Vitra to join us. The idea I have in mind won't mount to much without his authority to command the mend the void gate. Shall we be at it then? We'll meet back here anon. We, uh, it's the same place that we saved a, uh, babe from drowning.
I can use Sola requested that I join, but of her plans she offered scant detail. Oh, I forgot to mention the font of my attracts aggressive wildlife and you should watch out for them when oh. You go there next time. My apologies. The boy Maraud was glad to hear the news of the foundation. It means a new life for him and his sister. Do you have that flask for me? Yes, this should suffice. Thank you, Amigos. Look who I came across. The Stinian seem in need of diversion, and we in turn may need have need of his lands. Right then, now that our little party is assembled, let us make our way to the ruins. Will you have need of Matsu's boat again? Not this time. Once your stroller informed me of our destination, I arranged for a vessel to be made ready at Akiyali. Your Excellency is ever the gracious host, shall we? I don't know why, but I prefer Griffin for Amigos. You need not keep your weapons close at hands. The Guardians will not attack if I am present, so I pray you leave them be. At all this time, I thought, thought the tales of Azadal's horde were no more than drunken sailor's fancy. Tis likely not needed with Varshan along, but I held onto the map against the chance we might return to the ruins. Onto the boat, if you please. We'll chat on the way. Ship is yours to command. Ah, uh, thanks. We will set sail at once. Oh, this is so exciting. Azatar's legacy to see the truth of the legend with my own eyes. All aboard for the treasure vault. I thought we would clear this place of constructs the last time we came through. It would seem a few stragglers remained. Wait a minute. In the end, oh, Vrecha, you really should have spoken with the Stinian before we left. I should have to think we've cost them in terms of construct materials. Laid waste to them as ere I could utter a single word. Ah. The ruins alone were impressive enough. But I never dreamed such a treasure lay hidden in the depths of the bounty. It may have been helpful to know this device existed, Your Excellency. My apologies. The gate was a secret I shared with none but my closest advisors. I feared for what might happen should those with ill intentions learn of its existence. What is it you're doing now? There's something I wish to verify. The Noah reports claim that a short stint into the void carries little risk of etheric imbalance. Should one suffer an injury, however, or if one's expedition drags on longer than intended, that risk becomes significantly greater. Graha theorized that a warding scale would confer protection from the void's corrupting influence. 
But I would prefer to test that hypothesis before we set foot in the 13th ourselves. So, this is an experiment of sorts? Yes, an experiment. Tell me, how would you go about testing the efficacy of the Warden Scale? As well go myself. And because this isn't necessarily that bright. And how would you do that? The gate is still too small for any of us to pass through. Estinian is correct, which is why I've elected to send a familiar in our stead. Now, a lowly imp can navigate a fissure, no matter how narrow. Which means an arcane entity of similar stature should be able to manage the same. I hadn't wanted it to come to this, but no other familiars will do, I'm afraid. Think back to Matoya's relic. Aqua I marine. Like the sound of that. Water crystals. What fiend does she mean to summon? From ocean rise and cloud bank form, from mountain spring and rainfall storm, from river flow and life be born. Water, water, frost and fire! your arms. I fear she's been possessed. Oh, come now. That was adorable. Though not my first choice, these familiars I conceived of as a child have the best chance of fitting through the gate. I only wish my younger self had considered a more dignified ending to the creation ritual. In any case, these two should serve as well. This one will bear a warding scale. And when they return from the 13th, we can observe how the talisman, or absence thereof, has affected the progress of the Void's corruption. If I could impose upon you to open the gate, Your Excellency? Kind of confused about ah, what just happened? Yes, of course. We should also be wary of Void Sense slipping through while we conduct our experiment. Estinian, you are to keep Nidana safe from harm. As you say. You had best be on your guard as well. Uh, I always am, or do I want to tease her and say froth and foam? I'm going to say froth and foam. Oh, are you volunteering to join the Nixies? I could shrink you down, you know. Let us begin, shall we? Mm, I love it. I love it so much. Ah! Nixies, into the void. And I was like, goodbye.
That music, by the way, uh, that F during the summoning uh, was also the music from Matoya's Relic. These Nixies are basically smaller versions of the the fight we did in the water, which I think is the second one. Um, where the Nixie was giant. <laughs> Every time I come here, it reminds me of that dark portal above the Crystal Tower and the final lash of Ajdaya's tail that she plunged into the void. I struggled to picture Yastrona as a little girl. Easier to believe she sprang fully formed from one of Ma Master Matoya's cauldrons. Sister Sabi, I will never see Yastrona the same again. Wrath and foam, indeed. You need to wait for a time to for a time to ensure a meaningful result. Be patient and keep a watch for any intruders. Oh, hold on a second. Be right back. Just, just a second. Like Nidon is back there, like, I'm all excited. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> I love Nidon so much. I think we've waited long enough. Nixis, return to my side. Thank you, little one. You did well. The poor thing. Its essence has been irrevocably warped. I must reseal the void gate. That was a sharp lesson in the dangers of void gates. And what of our experiment? I'd say the results speak for themselves. The unprotected Nixie has suffered extensive etheric corruption. 
As Nidana observed, it's well on its way to becoming a void scent. The one merged with the talisman, however, appears unaffected. I sense no changes to its equilibrium. Rest now, little ones. Graha's theory was correct, then. So it would seem. But while our second familiar was untouched by void energies, the talisman itself shows signs of degradation. It was, of course, originally designed to shield the soul from primal tempering. It stands to reason that etheric corruption of a different sort would affect it differently. We may need to modify the warding scale's design to account for the 13th's uniquely unstable ether. You've said much of the Void's instability, but my imagination fails me. What manner of place is this broken world? Ah, my apologies. I forget that not all of us spend our days sequestered in dusty archives. The 13th is a reflection of the source that was drowned in a flood of darkness. In Emmett Selk's own words, this tragedy was a result of the Asians' attempts to force a rejoining. They erred in their haste, and made of that world a useless void. You remember Una Kalhai, the unusual child we met during our troubles with the Warring Triad. He explained the fate of the 13th thus. The champions of that ill-fated world used a stone known as Aurasite to contain the power of primals. But those self-same heroes were gradually corrupted by the Aurasite's bleeding energies, transforming into fiends with an endless hunger for ether. By the time anyone thought to oppose them, Light's strength had grown too feeble and the balance of the 13th tipped into eternal darkness. It was Elidibus, as I recall, who rescued Unakalhai's spirit from his final battlefield. But I wonder if there were others whom the emissary saved from oblivion. I'm going to say Arbert's Companion, the Elven Swordswoman. Silpha? The adventurer who traveled with the Warriors of Light? And you say she was another of Elidibus's pawns? I see. So Ciela, or rather Silva, was beguiled by the same dreams of heroism as Unakalhai. And what of your own experience? Will you tell us of what you observed during Noah's expedition? I can picture it now. The sunless, Stygian expanse, infested with legions of ether-starved monstrosities. A void in every sense of the word. What you have described in such lurid detail is exactly why I hesitate to encourage you. Worry not, Great Vritra. Our journey into the 13th is but the first leg of a longer voyage. A voyage that shall lead us to other reflections, to new mysteries and discoveries. And I mean to be there every step of the way. But first I must focus on refining the warding talisman. Then I can begin work on constructing an artificial Atomos. 
Or I could, if I had the relevant manuals to hand. Might I be so bold as to request access to the Sartrap's family archives? <clears throat> Your Excellency? Hmm? Oh, yes. That can be arranged. I will speak to my officials upon our return. We will see you back in the city then. Stinian always has the uh, compulsion to help dragons. And he's a little upset with how Peter is responding to all this. Seeing that Ter Voltaire's first hand was an experience, but I doubt fear of such creatures is the root of Vitra's hesitation. Since Nadana succeed, once Nadana succeeds in replicating the mark outermost, uh, the the door to the thirteenth will be ours to open. Will you be crossing the threshold alongside us? I realize there is more, more. This is more my endeavor than yours. Hmm. To be honest, I have no interest in visiting the void myself. Might we discuss this later? There is something I must do first. Probably all heads boat. Although, technically, we have teleportation magic. Why does everyone insist on being so secretive? I at least had had good reason for not wanting to explain my Nixie ritual. <clears throat> Since we proceeded, shall we proceed with our preparations then? As we saw, the warning scale maybe can be effective at protecting the bearer from other sources of etheric corruption. Nevertheless, the talisman's durability will need to be improved as a, if it is to withstand the Void's influence on, for a prolonged length of time. And I think that is the problem we can address without involving the, the brilliant but busy alchemist who created it. Who do you know who excels at this kind of structural augmentation? <laughs> Scarlet and Iron Works. An excellent suggestion. As I recall, Sid himself is no stranger to the void and volatile energies. With his experienced hand at the helm, I have every confidence that the Ironworks can strengthen the warming scale. Come, let us visit their operation in Margo's Reach, commission their best and brightest. And when the best parts of this, they immediately teleport us to Rago's Reach. Perhaps this young man can, is, can locate Sid for us. Amigos, what brings you to the Ironworks? We have a commission for you and your president, actually. Actually, assuming he's available. As I said, uh, certainly, I'll see if he has a moment free. Yeah, Amigos, you shall over here. Uh, got a commission for us? Okay. I'll be waiting. Pleasure as always. Hey, you have a job for us. Exposition. Any into the void to find a lost dragon? Sounds almost Pedestrian compared to your last adventure. Honestly, I don't know if you could say anything that would have surprised me after meeting on in that bloody mess. 
All right, let's take a look at this talisman of yours. You said there were some signs of degradation. Hmm, seeing some manner of corrosion has set in a, in a round a scratch on its surface. Much of the void's corruption seeped much as the void's corruption seeped into Nero's wounds. Nero through his wounds. In which case our best the bet would be to simply prevent the scale from being damaged in the first place. How might we achieve that? We have a coding agent for strengthening trinkets and like. I'd be wary to apply any compound that would upset the scale. The scale's delicate alchemical balance. Far safer to dress in armor. We'll construct a protective casing, one utilizing metal alloys with high ethereal conductivity so as not to impede the talisman's primary function. A bit of armor, as you said. Nero has compiled data on the 13th, so I'll have him pitch in with the design, just to be sure. If only it were such an ordeal to convince him to follow our safety protocols. Well, I've never had such a reckless employee. In any case, we may need some time to untangle the particulars. Understandable. You, we know when, how busy your schedule is. The final result would doubtless be worth the wait. Ah, a hard part would be ducking Jessie in his const her constant barrage of demands while we sneak around doing the fun stuff. We'll see what we can do. I honestly thought the first time I did this, I thought this would be our final quest. I think we can leave the rest to say it's capable hands. Let's attend to the great work and see how Nirana is getting on with the mock Atmos. The insatiable curiosity of our alchemists has ever amazed me, though I've largely left them to their own devices since we opened the gate together. I hope Nadonna has good news for us. Ah, hey Stola! The adjustments are going well, I hope. It is a lengthy process, but the end is in sight, yes. That's wonderful news. I myself had some good fortune searching through the Sartrap's private records. What I found was a transaction log dated around the same period as when Alzadal's legacy was built. It included a purchase list of highly exclusive alchemical components. And I knew I'd discovered the key to making the artificial Atomos. I then visited the High Crucible to commission the materials. After I'd explained my requirements, I was beset by volunteers insisting I allow them to help with the entire project. The usual reaction to someone forcing open a void gate is to run for the hills. Harnish academics certainly are a different breed. The alchemists of old were cut from a similar cloth. The unknown held no fear for them. Indeed, they were ever eager to seek new knowledge, regardless of the danger. And were you not also fearless, heedless even, in your determination? My sire entered his dormancy before I was hatched. And so it was Ashdaya who kept my eggs safe and warm. It created a bond between us. Even long after I learned to fend for myself, I rarely strayed from her side. She was my guardian, my sister, 
my dear companion, and not a single day passes that I do not mourn her absence. No matter how deep the darkness, I would not surrender my search. I promised myself the time would come when we would once more take to the skies together. But I am satrap now. The Radiant Host is here to serve, Your Excellency. Nardine, what is this about? Sir Estinian told us of your predicament. For centuries you have protected Rad's at Han, never showing your true self, hiding behind a curtain and living only in service to the people. Your dedication meant more to us than your deceit, and so did we accept you as our rightful ruler. After all that you have sacrificed for this nation, did you imagine we would begrudge you your heart's desire? We survived the final days. We are a strong and proud people. We, the Radiant Host, will keep Thavnir safe in your absence. I am grateful for your loyalty and for your encouragement, and yet... Now you listen to me, Varshan! You are wearing that face, after all. As I have told you before, you are a little brother to us all. And if you are family, then so too is your sister. We are there for you if you need us. But do not ask us to sit by and watch while you abandon a sibling you have ached to rescue for millennia. will succeed in opening the way. It is only a matter of time. All you need do is prepare to step through to the other side. Your Excellency, I wanted to thank you for building the orphanage. It means so much that my sister and I will have a place to be together safe and happy and i hope that you and your sister can be together again too motions I kind of want to select this other option because I keep pro selecting this first one every single time. I kind of want to put that other one just so I can see how it, it plays out, but I can't. Uh, I'll, I'll do it the next time I do this. Yes, there will be a next time. I have fifth character now. You well, to protect them well. You must take heart. You'll see why that's important. Take heart and protect them well. Such were the words I once said to you, and here I stand, failing to live up to them. If my heart is torn, I am fit to protect neither Ajdaya nor Radzadhan. My people, I have come to a decision. Vashan will depart Thavnir for a time. My dragon self will remain in the palace 
but only to conduct the satrap's most essential duties. While I am focused on controlling this vessel, there may be matters that escape my attention. I rely on you, my trusted friends, to watch over one another until I return. Take care and fair fortune, little brother. Many tears would be shed should you come to harm. I would not dare make you cry. Oh. Take heart and protect them well. Convincing others to follow their hearts is not my forte. We'd have gladly let, let our more philosophical comrades take the lead, had they been here. But somebody had to give that boy a good talking to. But suppose I'll be reprimanded to you. I did just yell at the satrap. <laughs> I will not squander this chance you have given me. I will find a stair. We'll have that Atomos built before you know it. When a project like this comes along, we can give it our full and undivided attention. Sleep? Ha! Who needs it? Oh, that reminds me. We should finish that other project that we're working on for His Excellency. You surprised me, Estinian. For a lone wolf, you've shown an unusual degree, degree of, shall we say, involvement in helping Vitra reach his conclusion. It was for the greater good. The worm's thundering sighs were keeping his citizens awake at night. We had travelers believing the place was wracked with an unusual, st unnatural storm. <laughs> what is your own answer, Anne? You seem disinclined to venture into the void. And when I was on, when I was one with Nidhogg, his vengeful thoughts. His thoughts were my thoughts. His endless rage, my rage. The soul chilling grief he nursed for Ratikoska's death. I would not wish such agony upon a foe, let alone a friend or an ally. If there is a chance we could spare Vitra that pain, then I will follow you. An unusual crew, any other former signs you want to call in, or just the four of us? The usual crew we have. Indeed, but, a perf but perfect for a purpose, I think. I'd rather not bother the science with uh, less than a d dire threat to the star. Now on to the specifics. Unlike the first, where the flood of light was halted before its devastation was complete, the 13th was utterly subsumed by darkness. My plan is such as to explore the void in stages, draw into safety after each brief forward. It would be more convenient that we had some manner of base camp nearer to the gate itself. One of the palace chambers should serve. Let us convene outside Megaduta. Like the Razit Han. was put up in a guest room at the palace while I waited my audience with Vitra. I expect we will be given the use of something similar. Conducting our expedition now, the Bryson Sons will raise just as much questions as recruiting too many scions. At least here in Ratzathan, we might be expected to appear road weary for our local explorations. Please, may, we, may you aid the salt trap in this endeavor, even if he ate even as he aids you and yours. And so we will require suitable accommodations, might 
might we make something available to our guests? While the chambers are presently hosting the great mounds of treasure will be carried out of the vault. Once the Foundation's activities begin in earnest, however, we will redistribute the trove to make a room for room make a room or two ready for habitation. But please inform me when you have completed the arrangements. Uh I'm guessing we're gonna get an in room. In Megaduta? As you've heard, we have well have you settled in Megaduta in due time. As ever, you are most gracious, my ex your excellence. You risk yourselves to aid me in my search for Ashtaya, providing comfortable quarters is the least I can do. I only wish we knew more about our destination. Gods only know know how long our explorations might possibly take, or what our chances of success might possibly be. Exceed or fail, I am grateful for you to for convincing me to make the attempt. On that note, I will return to the great work and lend what help I can to, to Nidana. You, you have preparations to make? Now we venture into the 13th. Now is the time. There's other, a couple other things I need to do. All I need is my armor and my lance. Perhaps I'll train with the Radiant Host to pass the time before we depart. You know what this means to me, Amigos. But my purpose does me not consume you as well. We are headed to another world. Find what joy you can in the experience. You are a traveler. An adventurer taught. This I know. We are Asm. We are a shard of Asm. Actually, we're eight shards of Asm. So seven rejoinings and then getting Herbert. This I know. This is the end of the MSQ. Uh, we've got time. Um, let's... Uh, let's, uh, uh, let's go crit. Oh. Meanwhile, on the 13th... Unwalked adventurous spur, pulses quicken, spirits stir. All right, hop over to uh, not Rodson Han to uh, old Charlian. Uh, I'm going to actually look into this quest line first. The other one will take a little longer. 
Fresh face student face lights up in the sight of you. So this time for the Alliance raids. Mists of the realm. Ah, Amigos, welcome back. As you perchance here, here to see Cryo? Just given to understand she has a task that she desires your assistance. Then I shall fetch her at once. Pray, wait a moment. Oh my gosh, my thanks for coming. If you're a, I'm not a, if you're now available, I'd like you and Raha to assist me in the task I had mentioned. For you to call on Emigos, I assume the task in question is somewhat more exciting than uh, sorting through paperwork, which I am pleased to add I have finished. So, if Emigos is ready, then so am I. I ventured to the bounty who has only served as whet my appetite for field work. Not to oversell things, but I suspect you won't be disappointed ere I divulge the details, however, permit me to provide some background. As you know, our organization, the Students of Baldessian, was founded by my grandfather, Galaf. Our stated mission was to uncover the mysteries of Heidelin and interpret her will, particularly through the study of her gift to us. We have since learned the whole, tr the whole truth, and it might be said that we have fulfilled our mission, but our work is far from over. In the course of our endeavors, we also sought to devise countermeasures against threats that may come to light. Our involvement with the Warring Triad is an example of such. It is my belief that in continuing to seek out the unknown and dealing with threats, we best carry on the student's mission. We best honor those we lost lost when the Isle of Valor was destroyed. Forgive me, I didn't mean to darken the mood. In saying all of this, I simply wanted to clarify our organization's purpose for a new age. In line of with said purpose has been reviewing new requests and one in particular jumped out at me this comes from none other than rembros the sons of koinak truly has something happened in mordona then so it would seem he wishes to entrust the matter to us well his missive is sparse in details he writes that it lies beyond the sons of Expertise, uncharted territory were the exact words you used. I'd like like you to meet with Rembrandt and conduct a preliminary survey. What say you? Count me in. Wonderful. When you're ready, pray make your way to Revenant's Toll. I shall let Rembrandt know to receive you there. I must remain here to oversee our operations, but should it transpire that more hands are needed, don't hesitate to send word. Well, there's no time like the present. If we go on ahead to the Revenant's Toll, I shall make ready and then be on my way. There you are, Amigos. It would seem you we're early. we're early. My apologies for the wait. Rambrose, what a pleasure to see you again. How have you been? The pleasure is all mine, my friend. This has been I've been well, and it gladdens me to see that you are too. Now, I know you have many demands upon your time, so I shall explain the particulars of my request at once. Recently, an explorer came to us who claimed to have discovered the Phantom Realm. The Phantom Realm? So this is what you meant by uncharted territory? I'm not familiar. 
Perhaps unsurprising, given that it is a lesser known legend. The legend holds that across Eorzea there exists a realm that appears, appears as a mirage. Though visible from a distance, it fades away as one draws closer. Now, while it is featured in myth since ancient times, the realm's existence could not be proven, and thus it was seldom mentioned in the literature. In spite of this, fueled by rumors of the occasional sighting, the myth was persisted and continues to capture the hearts and minds of explorers. And you yourself uh, should reach out to us. Is it real, then? When first the explorer in question approached us, us we doubted him, but we couldn't doubt the uh, evidence to, of our senses. Nay, the realm is real, as you will soon see for yourselves. Good gods, part of me still struggles to believe it. But we have no reason to doubt you. Suffice it to say, we are eager to see the realm, too. Whatever truth awaits, I pray you will succeed in finding it. Seek out the explorer, one Derek. He, is, he was seen more of the realm than us, and should be willing to serve as your guide. I asked him to accompany me here, but he preferred to continue exploring on his own. He will be somewhere near the banks of Silverton Lake, Lake, I expect. Understood. All thanks, Rumbers. Come, let us split up and look for our explorer. Baby Oppo Oppo doing here. You see a small Oppo Oppo. Couldn't possibly be a explorer. Could it? Just in case you were entertaining the thought of my ghost, that Opa Opa is in our explorer. I have the man in question here with me. I'm Derek, the one who discovered the Phantom Realm. My apologies for making you search for me. It's about this creature, are you? I found him injured during one of my journeys and tended to him. Since then, he has, he has taken to follow me around. He's inquisitive, but otherwise harmless. You pray, pray, pay him no mind. You're the hero to deliver our star from doom, are you not? What good fortune that one as capable as you could lend us his aid? be clear, our organization is yet to accept the commission. Before we can make a decision, we will conduct a preliminary survey. Will you guide us to the Phantom Realm? Of course. I will show you to the entrance at once. The gate to the realm, long dreamed of by explorers. What are you? Impressive, isn't it? When the gate manifested, so too did this magic, allowing us to thus walk upon water. Yeah, it's just like Oriandre's spell.
Someone conceives the means to do this at will. An intriguing individual. Perfectly safe, I assure you. Come. By the twelve, you could truly can walk here. What mat metric is this? Or what these is it per perpetuated? Forgive me. Let us continue on. This is the Phantom Realm. The Omphalos. think the entrance would live over Sil Silver Tea Lake? There's nothing out of the ordinary from the environment. The sights, the sounds, the smells, all appear as they should be in nature. That is to say, this place is no illusion. I bid you welcome to the navel of the Phantom Realm, the Omphalos. The Omphalos, you say this place is called? Uh, the name is my own conception, I confess. I felt it, we needed something to call it by. Thus you wondered the word means navel in the ancient tongue. An allusion to Mordono's location at the heart of Aldenard. If you, as you can see, this is, there are man-made structures and the place appears well kept. Yet there isn't a single soul in evidence. It is my hope that you will help me to shed light upon this realm, to learn who created and to what end. I should also like to know why, why it was revealed itself now. Was it simply chance that kept it hidden or something more? In any case, let us begin by taking a look around.
In the distance, you see what appears to be the Crystal Tower. Though the clouds make it difficult to be sure, it would seem you are in the sky over sil above Silverterry Lake. No such isle could be seen from the outside, however. Your own monument has been erected here by whose hand you cannot say, but the motifs wrought from its base appear familiar. Number of structures such as this have been seen in the area. What purpose could they possibly serve? The architecture is unlike anything seen in Eosia. Truly exquisite stuff. Just looking around, have you? What are your impressions? We would, we have had only a cursory glance, but this is truly a mysterious place. Gleaming spire rise, rising above the clouds, which is certainly the Crystal Tower. And judging by by its as, aspect, we are a considerable distance above Civil Tier Lake, which would suggest the gate we entered is a teleporter. However, if this isle lies where it appears to lie, it couldn't have escaped the Battle of Silver Tear Skies in Skaith. Which is to say, we are in Madonna, yet we are not. It is as if we were displaced from our world, if only slightly. This place is an apple way to put it. Was there aught else you noticed? Aye, the motifs upon yonder structure, they are unmistakably the mark of the Twelve. I know that's Lynn There's Thaliak, I think, is over here. But which I posit by which I posit that this is created to be a place of worship. But by whom? I cannot think of any who would possibly build such such grand promises, never mind magically conceal it, at least not in the wake of the Battle of Silver Tear Skies. Aye, this is a mysterious place indeed. That's a uh, Ralgar, and that's Byragot. Uh, I think this is Naltzal, and this is Azima. Maybe? I'm not sure. It seems that there is but one solution to our ignorance, thorough investigation. For this, we will require more manpower and supplies, among other things. With your permission, we will confer with our representative's cryo and make the necessary arrangements for a formal investigation. If that is what you must be done to commence your work in earnest, then by all means. Without further ado, then let us return to Charlian. Hold, mortals!
You profane the sacred realm with your very presence and must answer for your inerrance. Damn, his thighs are thick. Look at that chest. Got Ralgar, Byrgat, Naldthal. There, well, they'll, they'll introduce himself. I am Byrgat, the builder. Pyrogot, then the twelve are real? Let there be no doubt, we are no simulacra born of mortal face. Nay, we twelve are divinities true. And in Heidelin's absence, we are the star's rightful rulers. It's will. Close. Closely have you we watched mankind. And we have determined that you, champion of Hydalin, pose a threat to our ascension. You are foolish to wager onto our realm. We would destroy you with ease here now, but as divinities we must demonstrate grace and forbearance. There is but one path we must weigh this mortal's worth. Here, here, let there be a trial. Hmm, well, the mortal would invariably be destroyed. It would at least provide us with a diversion. What? You suddenly appear and expect us to simply comply with your whims? Protest if you wish, but mortal logic it means not to gods. You will abide by our laws. Lo, no, the gateway to our sanctums lies open. Show us the strength of mankind. Show us the honor of mankind. Show us the spirit of mankind. If man would remain the master of his own destiny, then assemble your comrades and come. Come and prove your worthiness. Seven Hells. During your pre my previous forays, nothing like this ever happened. I encountered not a single soul, and certainly not gods. And by their own admission, they mean to take over the star. What are we to do? The situation has indeed taken an unexpected turn, but we must think, try to think clearly. The Twelve has long been revered and worshipped in Neosia, and the myths about them abound. But to my knowledge, there has never, never thus appeared so openly before people. For these beings to suddenly reveal themselves just when you're here, claim supremacy over the star, and challenge Emigos to a trial. Too much of this feels odd. It gives me pause. Fair enough. Yet as it stands, it seems we can't dismiss the threat either. Wherever they are, they're issuing a challenge. The challenge accepted. Uh, Gaius Van Balsar once said that the 12-2 were simply primals. This is turning out to be another strange bear. Uh, whatever they are, they issue a challenge. Challenge accepted. The pendulum is ever, my friend. In any event, if there have been 
their beings seek dominion over the stars, they say. What happens here may have far-reaching implications. To that end, I believe we should take action. Suffice it to say, you are with me. And the student start of Baldessian will officially tend to the situation. I, in the course of studying the star's mysteries, we have undertaken it, uh, undertaken to deal with any, any threats that may arise. This is no different. To think we will, will encounter the Twelve. Right, let us deliberate a course of that action. Derek, do you know of these three sanctums? Aye, there are domains in the Phantom Realm that lie beyond each gate. We'll explore them all. Perhaps due to etheric instability, there are times when one can enter when ordinary one cannot. But it would seem the way has been open for us. Well, uh, I encountered no gods during my previous forays. I saw enough to know my way around. I am but a humble explorer and cannot contend with gods. But if you would be willing to protect me, I will serve as your guide. Assemble your comrades. I regard bait us. As strong as I know you are, you, you know little or less of our foes. Neither their strength nor their nature. Would we decide to be reckless to face them by ourselves? Nay, you must choose an approach that affords us the best chance of victory. In that end, this time I shall work behind the scenes. While you set forth to answer the God's challenge, I will do what I can in capa my capacity as a student. For one, I would behoove us to arm ourselves with knowledge about the Twelve, and I shall begin by appraising the cryo of the situation. By thus utilizing our resources to the fullest, we shall overcome whatever trials await. I right, need to grab some water. Be right back. Might see about queuing. I'm not sure how long the queue is. I'll be right back in any case. Oh, shit. Hey, right, be right back.
All right. Now let's see if we get that institute EQ again. If not, I'll be a little upset. Nope, I got our wait time of 23 minutes. Oh, while we're doing that, let's uh, pop back to Charlene and see if we can start the other quest. So we're queued for the Alliance Raid. Let's take a look at normal raids. He appears my calculations were correct. I knew that this, at this sp very spot, I would encounter none other than them because, oh, there's the queue. <laughs> Guess I won't start this quest. And turn turn up the music. Trust me, you, you'll thank me for this. The music is great. Can't wait until they release the uh, soundtrack for this. Thick boy is first. I've not done this on Red Mage yet. This will be a new experience.
All right, cut. I did pretty well on that one. Uh, pass on that. Uh, you know, I probably could agree on this, but I want something that's beneficial for now. The builder has been made to yield. Intriguing. Then the destroyer shall take your measure. After you have provided my servant with some spawn. Hey, it finishes when I was finished my melee combo. A 
overhead stands a statue I have fashioned for our contest. I won't be surprised if I fall off. His fingers look weird because his fingers are going like completely 90 degrees. Is it, there's not even a curve to him, really. Well, a little bit of one. Oops, I read that wrong.
but where's my red button? Oh, do I not have enough mana? Oh, no, I'm right within range. Enter my realm, if you dare. a lot of summoners.
That wrong. Ah, uh, fuck! Every single time that one I screw up.
Here we go. Last boss. Here's I love this part. I am no keeper of the realm of the living. They switch. I always have problems with Thal's balls.
God damn it. I got greedy. I am.
You have been found worthy. Very crazy in an hour loop of that song. I love it. Striking pass, doubting pass, breaking pass, doubting pass, need, need, need. I think I'm getting an adult card. Uh, and three, ooh, I might get one of the orchestral rolls. The last one, the one I want, I did not roll up. I got a card. No, uh, I didn't get the other cut the uh, customer at all, but mm, so we'll give the summer. Right. Feel safe, thank goodness. I rushed here as soon as I heard the tidings from Ra. Is this true? Beings claiming to be the twelfth have appeared. Exposition. You've defeated them all. Incredible. I had no doubt that you would succeed, but I'm no less impressed for it. Of it. Ah ha ha! Seldom have I felt such exhilaration. You said you defeated them all. Well, I defeated them, but I didn't necessarily kill them. Do you think that the day will come that you will put on an act for men? I must say, Morgoth, you played the villain role to perfection. Come now, Master. I merely did what was necessary to compel the mortals to confront us. Ah, still it pained me to speak, to speak to our beloved child's children so unkindly. So you say, Aziba, yet you, that you seemed happy enough to fight them. You did not forget the true purpose of the trial, I hope. Well, I couldn't help but be excited. But do not tell me you felt differently. Consider yourselves fortunate, children. It is rare indeed to see Nod Thal in such high spirits. What in the world is happening? Didn't you say you had defeated them? They managed to flee, or perhaps were resummoned. Put up your weapons. You have naught to fear from us. Rest assured, we are not summoned beings. We do not drain the land of Ether, nor do we take men into our thrall. But what are the gods who were summoned during the Calamity? The ones Master Louis Swa called forth to protect the realm. That was not us, but a primal bone of your fervent prayers for salvation. Indeed, that the worst of the Calamity was averted, that the realm restored in its aftermath was a direct testament to, to the power of your hopes.
Why choose to appear before us now? This has been all the hopes, so too do we gods. To realize our aspirations, tis essential that we do battle with you. Thus did I falsely claim that we sought to rule the world. Twas deceitful conduct unworthy of a divinity, and I must apologize, not only for that, but for using my powers to do harm besides. Eh, it's fine. These hopes of yours, won't you tell us what they are? We cannot. We wish to know the truth. You must discover it for yourselves. Tis not easy to move forward when there is seemingly no destination. But if you press on, you will eventually arrive at the answers you seek. Aye, you will understand why we hold up. And far more besides. We'll learn the very truth of our existence. Go forth, mortals, and seek knowledge of us, and when the time is right, we shall meet again in this place. All right, got over in the normal time, time of everything. Uh, so we will, well, let's complete the quest. As if hearing from your battling the Twelve wasn't shocking enough, to have them appear before your eyes, suffice it to say, is hidden each. While much of them seem, remains shrouded in mystery, at least they seem open to reason. And considering our next step, I should very much like to hear your detailed accounts of them. Right after I have a word with our client, that is. Please give me a moment to introduce myself, and then we can review the situation. All right. So I'll pause there, and the next time I stream, we will complete this, and then we will go on to the uh, normal raids, the Pandemonium raid. All right. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, Bears or Dragons this weekend. We've been fraught with... Uh, prior conflicts, so we haven't really played in the last few weeks. See you next week, or next time. I should say.